pussies. Welcome back. We're back, bitch. Happy New Year, everyone. Mike. It's good to see you, buddy. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, buddy. Look at that haircut and them shoes. Congratulations to you too, oh, friend. Who, me? No, I just had a week to take care of myself and get a couple <laughs> naps in. That's what you're seeing. The haircut and the shoes are nothing. This is just me having a couple of breaks. I mentioned to Tim that he and Del Calo should do eye porn. What would that look like? Like getting cum in them or? No, you guys could. You think be... you, you think I want cum in these things, dude? Not yet. They barely work <laughs> as is. <laughs> Let's start with that to come and see how far we can get with that. But I really think the money is into making black guys come in your eyes. Mm. I, I can't imagine there's any money in that. Plus, you're getting fucking Timberland boot prints on the side of your head all the time. People pay extra for that. <laughs> you wouldn't pay to see I'm a, not a, a five with money. a Timberland pr- <laughs> fucking imprint on it. Not with mine. Beautiful baby blues. No, sir, dude. I'm not a fucking soccer ball for black guys. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, you're about to be gay late. <laughs> Damn, we're right, to a legend. Yeah, yeah, for real. Um, wow, man. How's it feel? How did it feel picking? Uh, so you get a big. Cardboard box dropped on your front porch. A relief. You crack it open. Are they in like plastic bags inside or is it just a stack of books? Yeah, they're like wrapped in plastic in groups of five. So it was just like a ton of those. So you pull out a pack and then you're instantly like trying to like rip it from the corners because you want to hold one in your hands. I wash my hands first. Yeah, good idea. Because you were probably jacking it too when the mailman got there. <laughs> if I know, you, if I know my buddy Mike Rainey, he was cranking his hog when the mailman rang his doorbell and said, "Sir, your literature is here. <laughs> Can you hand it to me with my feet?" <laughs> Thank you. Wow. Yeah, it feels incredible, man. So you finally get one into your hands. How? What was that like? Uh buddy, it was a relief more than anything because I was done everything ha- that had to do with the book in November. I know. And it took until fucking this past Saturday for it to finally get my hands. And to get to that point, it was uh, it was a relief. I was excited. I just wanted to look at it for a while. Yeah. Because it was so much work that went into it. And uh, I just want to hold it. I wanted to feed it. That's a triumph, dude. I wanted to put it down for a nap later in the day. This is, uh, bro, this is like a key on the kite struck by lightning moment. You're holding the physical thing in your hands that you created with your brain. Yeah, it felt incredible, man. I'm sa- I'm sorry that you had to like hurdle some frustration to get there. I know that they kind of gummed up the works and, and held it up on you and delayed everything. But I, you know, I'm online. I read everything. There wasn't even anyone being nasty. Like, what the fuck, dude? Where's my fucking drugs book? Everyone was just like, "Did anyone get theirs yet?" I'm so excited. But were- don't you think it's cr- like? I know you think it took forever, but you wrote and self published the book in six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just- like that's. Hold, dude, I'm holding it in my hands yeah, know, right man. now. It's got a cool cover. <laughs> what the hell, it's man? It's scratch and sniff, too. Is it? No. <laughs> it's scratch and snort. <laughs> All right, that's the next batch. <laughs> well, just congratulations, Thank man. Thank you, buddy. Well, it's, cool to, it's cool to watch this pay off for somebody. And uh, it's, what an inspiration, man. You, yeah, I, I, I've like... I've got no um, no shortage of just uh, um, what what would I was a great way to put this. I don't know uh, motivation. I, for, I appreciate that, this. buddy, and I feel the same way. Uh, our buddy Ryan Foster texted me today to say Happy New Year and say that the whole squad's taking the short bus to the top now. <laughs> and I I feel that in my bones a hundred percent. And I just want to say <laughs> to every fellow retard out there, we're going to be licking windows in the penthouse this mm-hmm. year. So get ready. Yeah. As I spill coffee all over myself. True. Well, no. I mean, you, you, dude, you, you basically published Wigger War and Peace. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if if ever there was a time to tent your fingers and say big things coming, I mean, dude, big yeah. things are here. Yeah, big things no longer coming. They're here, and wow. everybody. Today is the day where people will start receiving them. That's so fucking exciting. So some people will have. We them do in have the chat up. Today. Let us know. Let us know if you got your copy and just I don't know, man. Thank you guys How for, fucking for being excited, are. man. This this just really means a lot. And dude, Crack Amico sent me the intro to the audiobook on Saturday. Can we? Would you mind if we played that for? I would love to, dude. I'll, I'll send it to you. But uh, send this to group chat. okay, I I asked Crack Amico last week as I was like putting together all the files of the audiobook, and I was like, oh man, it'd be really cool to have him do an intro song for this. I messaged him, and I was like, hey, would you be interested in doing this? He's like, I would love to. And he's like, it would be my honor to do it for nothing. He he wanted nothing. He just did it because he wanted to do it. Love and, of the game. And I was like, whenever you can. And I knew he was busy. He was going to L.A. with Lewis to do shows at the Comedy Store. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to forget about it. But even while he's there, 
it hits my inbox. I'm like, oh my god, I can't wait to listen. Insane. <laughs> my wife shed a tear listening to this in the car. <laughs> Brother, I, I played it in bed as soon as I woke up and I saw it. And Jamie, my wife was sleeping. She's like, what the fuck are you listening to? I was like, this is crack amigo on perks. She probably thought you were cranking your diarrhea tunes. <laughs> wow. But um, hold on. You got it? Are you sending the file to Danny? Yeah, I'm sending it now. I just, I can't believe it. Just incredible, man. So many people help me do this, and I can't thank everybody enough. Oh, you know what might be faster? I could probably just connect to the uh, Bluetooth. Is that possible? Uh, Don't worry about it. Danny's going to play it. Um, Yeah. uh, You'll see why Mary Jo cried in there, but, like, it's just... Everything from top to bottom, and then the, and then that then that's just the beginning of the audiobook, which is like for retards only. Yeah, it, I mean it. It really is. It's I could fall asleep to it, but also there there's so many parts where it's just incredible to laugh at because of the way that people did their narration. Yeah, and I I hate I hate to sound like we're we're not selling you the book right now. No, I if mean you bu- if you want to buy it, the cool, pre-orders not- are in. But like, we, dude, you have to understand that like we we are. I was thinking about this because it's New Year's. We need to start looking ahead. Mm-hmm. I haven't yet. I honestly, if I'm being if I'm being truthful, I'm maybe I haven't put pen to paper and and designed my 2023 yet. I will. I'm not I'm not really worried about it. But I was thinking, what, is this going to be? We're going into our fourth year of this, mm-hmm. right? I think the first two years we were kind of like making a um, like an instruction manual for not killing yourself, <laughs> <laughs> and then last year I think was kind of like stabilizing. Like, mm-hmm. okay, this is like it was. We have nothing yet, and it's crazy. I know, man. <laughs> but this year I think rubber meets the road. W- what better way to start? I feel like we're being fired out of a cannon just by um, you know the the triumph of your achievement here. Well, it's not mine because so many people helped. And it's not only with the book, but with the audio book, too. And, and it's just people. It felt like people were lining up to help. Mm-hmm. And it, it just made everything a thousand times easier. The only thing that was hard was the waiting. But it was just that just made me hotter for the book. Dude. And like, dude, we talked all this shit about like getting things done and like getting moving. And, it, you know, it took us a couple of years. But mm-hmm. like, dude, we were seriously just fat and going to kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can impress that enough. I still see feedback like, yeah, like. Is dad meat actually good or is it just like gay shit all the time? It's like, bro, we were seriously going to kill ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, there was one guy in a, in a subreddit that was just like, yeah, I just can't get behind the life is good all the time shit. It's like, no, like, right, there are dude. plenty of days where I would have walked in front of a fucking septa bus. <laughs> was... But we kept fucking going and you keep fucking going and you figure it out. Yeah. And good shit happens when you fucking yeah. make a plan yeah. to fucking uh... figure shit out. It's not that we're off that. It's just we don't need that every day anymore to not kill ourselves. Now it's like, okay, what kind of cool shit can we do? <laughs> January 9th will be two years since I uh, started Damn. interning on Dad Me. Happy anniversary, buddy. Wow. This is great. I mean, I'm going to take you to the end of the dove. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? When we, when we go to Shady Maple, it's on me, buddy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. We got to set that up. Yeah, I just went on a recon trip to Shady Maple. The update for the Patreon, Dom Scribers. Uh, b- by the way, thank you for getting us over 4,000 patrons. Cannot believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still only a dollar, but the uh, our word, word is bond, okay? Mm-hmm. I went to Shady Maple. I scoped it out. Here's the deal. We need to be there before 8 a.m. or we're not getting seated. It's crazy. Should we all dress alike? Ooh. Man, what well, you think we go full wigger gear just to Ooh, make it easier? I like that. Yeah, let's go full wigger. Yeah, grab, dude, get your get your wigger gear out of your closet. We're wearing that to Shady Maple. We're gonna drop. I guess this week we'll figure out the date and drop it on Patreon. But I went on my birthday with my family, and oh, we it was on a weekday, and we left at six a.m. and we got there like right before eight. At eight o'clock on the dot, the line just gets butt fucked all the way out into the parking lot so you got it you got to get there to just to have an easier time before 8 a.m were you so, the most in shape there. person there oh good question my sister was there and she's pregnant and fat now so she would have been my only competition no mary joe's there and she's actually in pretty good shape too fuck i was probably number one okay I was probably, <laughs> you know what let me be honest with myself i did push-ups two days in this in one week leading up to it so Probably the most ripped dude in the entire yeah, building. Oh, uh, dude, James in the chat uh, recommended uh, War Mode merch and sheathed knives. James, they actually sell <laughs> knives at Shady Maple. <laughs> you can buy knives in the basement there. Yeah, we're doing a wigger breakfast <laughs> to celebrate 4,000 patrons on um, Dad Meats. So, uh, do you have the intro, Danny? Are you ready to play it? 
I've been ready. This I'm is, sorry. I didn't mean to hold <laughs> this up. All right. Intro this. Yeah, this is Crack Amico's uh, intro for the On Perks audiobook. I was a relatively sound body, but whacked on painkillers. I'm on perks, popping them beans. I'm off the crack like a motherfucking fan. Yer, yer, repping the team. Ain't got a care in the world, but the birds on the screen. I'm in the city of bodily love. Popping the perky, I keep me a dub. At Disney with Mickey, I'm up in the club. I ain't even took a shit in a month. Ew, stinking it, bitch. Mikey buckets, make it rain in it, bitch. P U S S Y, sucking me dry, and I'm leaving a stain in it, bitch. Yeah, I'm on perks. When I'm on the phone or when I'm at work, whether I'm home or even at church, I'm on perks, on perks, on perks. I'm on perks. You know, nobody like him, man. You know, forgot about that line, by the way. I forgot Dude. about Butterly Love. <laughs> yeah, I almost jumped out of bed when I heard that. <laughs> man, I bet you he had that sitting. He had that track waiting to go. Oh my god, man! <laughs> That's Incredible. Too good. My my goodness, I'm dying. I'm dying to get the motherfucking. Dude, everything that he creates now. is like, all right, this is very funny, but also this is a really good song. Dude, we were there for the inception of the the Crack Amico. I mean, we're part of the genesis. Mm -hmm. Not to toot our own horns. Incredible, dude. That's the week we leave. Just beautiful moments and and the most righteous dudes just it, catapulting onto the ship. And a trail of farts. Trail of, trail of farts, man. Dude, I've never been more pumped. I woke up to a DM from Crack Amico talking about working on something together while he's here. Dude, yeah. I was like, Damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it just a picture of him fanning $100 bills saying it's time for a meeting of the minds? <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta get out of my fucking face with how, how crazy that was. Oh, there's a great, great question from Nunya Business. Perkmobile update? Yeah. Um, how we doing? Uh, all right, so I'm 45% of the way toward my goal of 5,000 copies sold. So, as soon as I hit five thousand, I'm going to the fucking dealership and setting the wheels in motion for my wheels in motion. This is gonna be fucking. I sick. can't wait to get it again, baby. I can smell that. So what do we? Mobile. So we got to brain. Well, that's this is for off air, but we got to brainstorm the next phase of the the PR campaign. You know, so far it was just get in front of big audiences and do big stuff, and that's been great. You know, dude, you're doing numbers already. I blown away man it, it's been life-changing and i can't tell people enough that it, it i had always thought all along that it's like man i just need to like i wasn't gonna have a dead relative leaving me any fucking money to give me that heads up so it's like all right if somehow i can get like a little bit of a bump to just get the fucking ship right and people buying this book did that and uh it's an, it's incredible man i took my wife for steak friday Ooh. <sighs> Damn, steak pussy's good. But... Oh my god, man. <laughs> <laughs> there's no pussy like steak. Did pussy. you cut her off? Like, oh, okay, you're gonna complain about tummy ache later. Let's stop eating now, brother. I got that bitch creme brulee. <laughs> mm -hmm. Damn, that's an aphrodisiac for me. Incredible, man. <laughs> Life is just great right now, and I would tell everybody buying the fucking book and to you guys and just yeah, shit's cool, man. Yeah, if you haven't bought it yet, you can buy it on perks.com and. uh it's just so nice to finally fucking have it. The audiobook will be up later this week. I, I can't wait for people to hear that now. Now that I have this, it's like, okay, I can't wait for people to get this in their hands, but then I can't wait for people to hear the audiobook. Because the audiobook has a ton more content that I couldn't fit in here. Because if I'd fit everything that I put in the audiobook into this book, this book would be like 500 fucking pages. So the audiobook, it ends up being about six hours long. Whoa. Yeah, it's a lot. And it's just wait, and you're giving that away with physical purchases? Or was that just for pre order? It's part of the the bundle. Now okay. we're gonna set it up so that you can also buy it separately if you mm -hmm. just already bought the book on its own, mm -hmm. and that'll get figured out this week. But um, damn, dude, it's it's so fucking funny. Like when Tim read his narration, he read it as though he was speaking to me on a fucking chirp phone. <laughs> <laughs> David James did it uh, in the voice of an old black woman. <laughs> We were also all reading it for the first time, so yeah. there's a lot of disbelief, I, I have to imagine, throughout the audiobook. Yeah, and you know what the great thing is, too? Uh, we recorded everything on video, too, so I'm going to release that, too. Dude, you're too, you're too kind. There's, there's so you, much You've created a multimedia stuff. extravaganza. I am retarded. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did it. But, yeah, you guys helped me do it, man, so 
There's no singular effort here, man. <laughs> VT said, this is just an infomercial. You're a fucking dork, dude. Take a hike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a fucking loser. <laughs> A guy, a guy fucking self-published a book, <laughs> and he's holding the copy in his hands, and it all came together perfectly, and you're going, this is just an infomercial. I'm not kidding, dude. I Like I, I was saying, we just we laid out the br- blueprint for not killing yourself. You should ignore all of it <laughs> and step in front of a fucking bus. <laughs> this is just an infomercial on a cash grab. Like, dude, six months of work, and the guy's just trying to yeah. give as much of it away as possible. <laughs> I'm not kidding you, dude. Fucking walk in front of the forklift that a guy is driving right next to you at your job right now. <laughs> Tell him to drop the pallet on your fucking skull, dude. You're a you're a net loss on the population <laughs> every time you take a breath. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Open one of the fucking vats that you're supposed to be staring and dive in. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. Yeah, we love you. This is a podcast for the working man, yeah. dude. Seriously, yeah. If you're breaking the law and operating a forklift right now while you listen or watch this, I'm not telling anybody. Yeah, it, actually, if you guys want to get like a 25 ounce Bud Ice for the job site tomorrow, <laughs> let me know and I'm going to Venmo you the money. For Hell you. yeah, drinking the work van. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, I would love an episode with uh, Wes and, and McCusker somewhere in the near future. I, I think we tried to put that together in December, but I don't know if Wes made it back to the East Coast. So, um, but we will. That would be great. Um, so yeah, what, what else uh, we have, we have, I don't even know where to start. We have so much. Let's to talk, uh, new year's resolutions. Ooh, Lions. Ooh, yeah. What do you got lined up? Well, I didn't do, I didn't, if you allow me to go back, you go back in time and be gay for a little while. I was thinking like, like I was mentioning earlier, dude, like, you know, we spent two years digging out and then we spent a year kind of just like getting our bearings. Right. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, I feel. I feel like I should be more effective. I feel like I should be getting more done. I feel like I'm busy all the time, but I'm not actually like showing anybody anything for it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's enough to just constantly be on the podcasts that I enjoy listening to. And I don't want to say hitting home runs. I'm, I'm quoting someone who left a comment somewhere hitting home runs on, on big podcasts. That's fine. That's fun stuff, but I need to, I need to start delivering on some stuff. So th- this year, my loose idea is I'd like to, Outside of like you know, obviously just skyrocketing in stand-up comedy, I think I'd I'd like to be in a movie, mm-hmm. and I'd like to do a stunt. I'd like to do a, a stunt in a movie. I think you'd be perfect for both, and I just want to make this suggestion for the movie thing. Mm-hmm. Something with Bollywood would be perfect for you. Whoa, you think no? Come I on, know man. that would be. You don't understand the movie. the quality of haircut you need to be in a Bollywood feature film. You could First do of everything all, that those movies need. They're all four hours long, so I'm assuming they shoot for like nine to eleven months at a time. <laughs> cool number. And you have to have like a quaff that's almost as the same height as your head. Okay. Like Indian dudes in Bollywood movies, they have double height heads because of the the flip over haircuts. <laughs> And then when they it, it accentuates that shit, but yeah, that'd be cool. But no, I I would take I would take anything. I I mean I fucked cheese in a movie one time. <laughs> I took I I accepted a movie role where they were like, we can't pay you, and you have to fuck a a brick of Swiss cheese. And I said, please, you please, know, can I do that? You know where the cheese fucker actors in Bollywood movies get their cheese from? From a new deli. Where? <laughs> Well, you still looking forward to the year two? <laughs> I feel myself backsliding right now. No, but well, so yeah, I want to. I want to be in a movie and do a stunt. Um, I'll, I probably want to. I want to. I've been playing so much guitar, dude. I think I got to record something with. I'll just ask my brother if I could just play him one of his bands. I'm gonna say, hey, can I play with your band? Can I go on tour with you? So I want to do something with music, and then, God damn, I need to just be playing more video games. I have I have too much fun on Twitch, but I don't get to play enough video games. So this year, I'm making a resolution to play just fucking a ton of video games. 
that I think will make me really happy. Oh, and then also, uh, I threw my back out in October in the pinata fight, and it just I didn't get to do anything like really physical up until like the end of the year. So I just got back into training. That was actually why I, I chopped off my hair, because I went back to jujitsu, and people were like kneeling on my hair when I was on the mat, and I said, like, "Now nah, this is I feel too much like a fucking bitch right now." They were putting Timberlands on your forehead. Yeah, dude, I got the full prostitute treatment when I'm back <laughs> back to jujitsu. People just like leaning a forearm. I'd be like, ah 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 ah. So uh, I think uh, I, I need to be in phenomenal shape. I'm going full buckaroo bonsai this year. That's it. I'm laying down the gauntlet, dude. I'm gonna. I'm making every day. I'm gonna wake up and I gotta be the fucking man. So maybe I'll fall short, but I'm gonna try really hard. You're already there. To be bro. an absolute motherfucker. You're already there, my friend. Oh, thank you. So that's that's my rough outline. And. I don't want to write a book or anything, but I do have some I do have some story ideas that I think we could shoot in some capacity. Maybe we could do make a short film, Danny. You want to make a short film this year? Let's make our own. Sh- Actually, fuck oh. that, dude. I'm not I'm not going to go to a short film, a long film. Yeah, let, uh, you know what? I'm not going to any auditions where no one gets me and I feel embarrassed and then I don't get the job anyway. I've spent a lot of time doing that. This year, Danny, we'll just shoot our own thing, but I have to do stunts in it. Uh yeah, that's not actually how a cheese fucker acts. But thanks for coming <laughs> in, okay? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the water on. Now, could you say John while fucking the cheese? Love it. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. I'm not going to embarrass myself in auditions this year, but we are going to we'll, we'll make a short film and it'll have it'll have some pretty high in high intensity action in it. Can I tell you something relative to your goals? Shoot. And I think you're kind of like moving in that direction anyway, but I think you need to hear this more often mm-hmm. and I think you're going to you're going to all shucks and you're going to try to play it off anyway, but you need to shut the fuck up for a minute while okay. I speak on you. You got it. You need to do as much stuff that puts you in the limelight because you are a superstar. Oh, well, thank you. And I think anything that you do in addition to what you're already doing, it just needs to be you. Yeah, true. <laughs> no, you do have a point. Okay. But I want to do fun stuff. I, I know. Like- it, it can be fun, but at the same time, I think you really need to maximize what you are. And you're something that's completely unique in the world. And no matter what it is, whether it's like you're the most talented person I know, you're devilishly fucking handsome, you're the funniest dude on the planet, you need to create more things that just bring that out more into the open but then also in addition to all the things you're doing do more things on your own and i dude i appreciate all that and i love you for saying that stuff and it's embar- it is embarrassing that you just said that in front of a live chat and they're probably going to make fun of me but <laughs> but i feel like since i'm not motivated by money really it it just very quickly becomes self indulgent for me so i do need Maybe collaborator isn't the right word, but I can't be left to my own devices because it will just devolve into me talking about Dark Souls. Like, anytime I'm like, what would I like to make? And then I just start thinking about video games. I go, mm, okay. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's well, what, here's... We, talk, we talked about this a little bit. There's going to be... There's, like... I don't want to say exactly what we're doing, but you'll have more content out there on a weekly basis true this coming year but you know okay so here's the and thing we can see what that grows what into. we're what we're talking about is the content game and that that's like you know tears in the in the rain you know that stuff just like it comes and goes i i'm seeing this and i go ooh, i like what you're doing here you've you've got something um tangible i need i need tangible results this year i don't need more money i just need tangible results and i probably do need to make more money for my family but um, I don't know what that translates to yet, but uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a healthy enough headspace to at least just have fun figuring it out. Here's one thing that, that comes immediately to mind is I know a couple years back, like you were you were outlining a movie that you're mm-hmm. writing. Yeah, I think that needs to be that's perfect for you. I think me and you Danny need to be shoot... the star of your own mo- own movie. Oh sure, me and Danny could shoot a short of that, and we could just figure out the whole process as we're going, and then and then take. Oh, I mean, we do have a. Is this what we were talking? about? This is one of the things we talked okay. about. Anyway, yeah, so we have we have outlines in place where we can, like, teach ourselves the work and then use that to show people with money, like, yo, finance a big idea that we have. We'll take care of all – we'll do all that this year. Um, it just – it you know what it is? It's I really dislike the feeling, and I learned this when, in my IT career. I hate the feeling of saying, yeah, 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 I'm going to get this done mm-hmm. because I was taught that that was, like, worthless, and you're only really supposed to talk about anything after you already did it. So it's it's an it's an uncomfortable feeling, but um, I don't know, dude. If you like if you like the, and I'm, I don't really mean it this way. I'm using it more as as an expression. If you like the dog shit that I'm doing now, I think this year is when I really start to get effective. 
but maybe not. Maybe maybe this is it. Maybe 37 years old is like the beginning of the downturn. I will say this. One one of your strongest attributes is that it's hard not to have fun around you. Uh, and I think more than that. Life of the party. You inspire more people around you to have more fun. Like me, me making an effort to try to have more fun is directly in response to you saying you need to have more fun. Yeah. I definitely did that last year, by the way. No one, did no one can fun. deny I figured out how to have a little bit more fun than I was already having last year. You did. You, you, t- you took it to the next level. I'm a man of my word. You are. I, th- I think one thing that you would be very good at is, I don't know, somehow like leading groups of people to do fun shit that they normally wouldn't do. Hmm. And whether that's in like being hired by fucking companies to do that or just setting it up on your own to just lead like a fucking Tim Butterly retreat, that would be the way to go. Huh. Yeah, definitely. I definitely can't get involved with companies. I actually humiliated myself at a at a nice party on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I what was did you do? Well, I was around polite company. It was it was uh, some of like the families of the children that we train with. Mm. Like our kids were there to sell. Like they we did an early New Year's Eve party, and so these are people that I like see every day and I train with. Like all the parents train together, and they kind of they know what I do for a living, and and they kind of get my humor. But then it's never been like an unhinged full conversation. And uh, a friend of ours was telling a story about uh, how he was in Vegas for like a tech expo. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, the evol- the adult video, the AVN awards were happening. <laughs> and he was talking about like seeing like porn stars in elevators. And everyone was like, ooh, oh, <laughs> crazy. And I was, you know, it was. I was laughing about, you know, seeing this like kind of square guy juxtaposed with these hookers. And uh, my contribution story, I was like, hey, you know, I, I I do like podcasts with some of these ladies, and man, they really are just all brain damaged drug addicts. <laughs> and everyone was like, cool. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fucked up to be around them. They were just like, nice, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I drank nine seltzers and ate pizza until I got sick. Do you remember what you said the last time we had a conversation about how brain damaged um, most of the porn stars we've interacted with are? No. You said almost every one of them has PBI. I <laughs> oh, no, TBI, TP. All right, Danny, can, is there a way to rewind this live podcast? All right, so Tim said they had traumatic pussy injury. God damn! Fuck! <laughs> I don't even want to sell books anymore. <laughs> Is this because the Eagles lost, Mike? Danny, can you call my mom to come pick me up? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll get a net on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but aside from that, I mean, yeah, so, you know, um, that's, that's, I think that's what I got. That's that's the core of what I'm talking about, and I can get more specific about it as the year goes on. But that's that's the general outline. What about you? What are you up to this year, buddy? I want to hit my goal of five thousand books because, yeah, dude, I'll never forget the feeling of having my Chrysler 300 repoed in the middle of the fucking night. Uh, I remember it like it was fucking last night, and how embarrassing it was, how emasculating it was, and just the feeling of not being able to do a fucking thing about it. Yeah, and letting another man take my fucking car, dude. One time I had to pay a tow truck driver $100 to get my car off of the back of the truck. Like, he didn't drive away with it yet, and he was, like, filling out, like, the the invoice or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bro, I'm here. Let me take my car. He's like, it's a hundred, it's already $100. And I was just like, oh, I was so worried about The worst. It. But, but then again, if he drove away with my car, I know that it's, like, $700 mm-hmm. in southwest Philly, by the way, in a place where you're like, I might get killed even just conducting business. Mm-hmm. And so I, I gave him the $100, and I looking back, I was like, I should have just mauled him. <laughs> I should have beaten the fuck out of this guy and dropped the car myself. Mm-hmm. And that's something that stuck with me ever. So I, I think I can relate to the feeling that you had letting a man repossess your Chrysler 300. Dude, he cut my truck nuts right off of it, too. <laughs> it's the fucking worst. But that's one of my primary goals is to sell 5,000 copies where I can treat myself to my Chrysler 300. On top of that, I want to just make more and more cool stuff so i think we all got the bug right now mm. like getting in here you, you in started september man we all started something baby. you got us all sick but just getting in and getting getting around so many people that are just like all right let's f- fucking move forward with every retarded idea that comes into our dumb brains yeah well you're also i mean you have to remember every time any of us gets any kind of like dude 
it's so gross that part of like the job is just drawing attention to yourself. It's really unsavory mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And I dude, I just watched that fucking Steam Paddock. No, I watched a, a West Coast comedy documentary, let's say on oh, YouTube. No. And it's like, how, how am I doing the same job as these guys? And it feels so icky and gross. Mm. So we need to like find a way to completely de- like compartmentalize that aspect of it. And then like come to, come to grips with the fact that like my job is to draw attention to myself and then keep people's attention when it's there. That's so fucking icky. When I, in reality, I think we're just tricking ourselves into thinking that like, I'm just doing my thing and people show up, you know? Mm-hmm. It's it, I th- maybe that's two ways to describe the same thing, but I, I I do have I struggle with that like every day. I know, but you have to remind yourself that if people genuinely didn't like what you did, that they wouldn't take part in anything. Totally, yeah, totally. But it's it, it's a separate thing. It's just my own self perception of just like mm-hmm. I can't believe I have to fucking draw attention to my thing. Mm-hmm. I can't believe I have to fucking sell tickets to my stand up. Why can't I just show up places and then it's all worked out and I never even have to think about it? But it is. Uh, that's part of the sausage. You know? I, dude, I think the only way to overcome that is to just constantly remind yourself that this is going to make people laugh. And that's what matters. It's, it, you you want to make mm. people feel good. True. That's what any of this, like, of course we get into this because we're fucking, we need fucking attention. But I, at the th- same dude, time, if if anything that any of us do can make people feel good for a little bit of time, it's worth it. That's what, you know what I do? And I this is this is so lame. But I do constantly remind myself, like, no, dude, there's guys that are just passing the time at jobs that they hate, and they're relying on us to make them not lose their minds. That Because that's the way I was, like, consuming, like, mm-hmm. podcasts and shit yeah. when I was sitting in my IT job. Like, no, dude, there's guys in warehouses right now just scanning barcodes and putting tape on stuff right now. And if we turn off the faucet, like, that's going to be that's gonna be a hole in their lives. They'll fill it with some other content, but it won't be as nice as this. <laughs> so I, I do, that's my high, I feel... That's like like my holy purpose that I give myself. Or it, these are all just justifications and I'm a piece of shit. No, I think you're a very nice guy. No, you too, buddy. You're a very sweet boy. Yeah. Yeah, so selling 5,000 copies of my book, I really want to fucking do that. I'm close to halfway there already, so I'll make it happen at some point this year. Guaranteed. Get my fucking baby back. Dude, what if I can hunt down my old Chrysler 300? Do you think there's any way that I That would be that? fun. Well, that's a thing in car guy stuff, like uh, like car guy blogs. It's like, yeah, I tracked down my dad's old Firebird. Like Wigger taken, took him. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I got a very fucking specific set of skills. In um, where, are you, where are these guys located again? Um, I have a very specific uh, pre-existing condition <laughs> preventing me from fucking working. Yeah, let me see if the fucking 42 <laughs> runs past there. Let me see if I can maybe get there by, like, I don't know, what time is it? Like, two now? It's seven? Um, oh shit, cause my yeah. bad. Could you guys actually bring it back to me? <laughs> but yeah, if I could get back my old baby, that'd be cool. Do you have? Is there, any, is there any chance you have the VIN number? Probably somewhere. Ooh, this would be a great adventure for us. Yeah, I'd, I'd to go track down your three hundred. Yeah. We don't have to wait until you reach your goal. Oh we can start God. tracking down the three hundred now and make it its own goal. All right, and then at when you reach a hundred percent of book sales, you buy the city. I, I can one hundred percent track this down because my friend is the guy that sold it to me. So I know he he ran the dealership that I got. Yeah, but it's who who's the guy that repossessed it? I don't know. What if we inter- interviewed a repossessor? Ooh. Yeah, Danny, are you? I don't see you like we writing anything down out. or typing anything. Rob, who's who's taking care of this? Oh, I got a whole spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> is it is it? Does it help or hurt the cause if we release the uh, the VIN number when we find it? Can will that can, can we can crowdsource some of this effort? Whatever it takes. God, what if it's a cube? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to speak that into. Ex- I'm sorry. Dude, that's like Les. Uh, yeah, Leslie Nielsen, Liam Neeson finding out his <laughs> daughter's a sex slave. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah. bad news for your boss. She's a cube. Now. Yeah. What if Cambodian guys are just fucking your car no. in, in a shipping container right now? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm getting a motorcycle. No. Then. <laughs> I'm getting a fucking Puerto Rican tricycle. Ooh no! Oh, we we got you know what? I'm seeing some negativity in the in the chat. Oh, that so that car has like already been crushed and scrapped by now. The 300s did not have a great shelf life, dude. I still see PT cruisers on the road. Don't tell me that we're not going to find this 300. <laughs> Shut up, man. Yeah, you know what? I mean, to that point, I was also nodding out at school plays, and here I am. <laughs> so look at me. Yeah, yeah we both should have been crushed yeah. into cubes by now. Dude, I, I'm thinking back. <laughs> Dude, when I was finding, like, going through all these statuses, there was one moment where, like, I went to, like, all right, I worked at a high school, and the kids were having a play, and I know they put a lot of time in it. I was like, all right, I'll go see this play. I went there on a Saturday. 
and I'm sitting in the audience and I'm nodding out. And my coworker <laughs> Allie is behind me. I didn't know she was there. And I felt her I felt myself get smacked in the back of the head. And I turn around, I see my coworker Allie. I'm like, yo, what's up, Allie? Initially I thought she was just saying what's up, like, hey, I'm here too. But like in hindsight, it was like, no, I was nodding out at my place of employment, which happened to be a school. <sighs> yeah. I mean, she just probably you know, part of her was being a hater though. Yeah. If you, think about it. If you really look at it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, me myself personally, I don't have that gene. She's probably she's probably going, must be nice. Mm -hmm. She you got a little bit of must be nice in that smack in the back true, of the head. True. Ain't nobody gonna write him up. Mm -mm. Ain't he ain't gonna get in trouble, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do be hating. Man. Let them hate and watch the money pile up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, long winter for the haters. All right, so get the get the baby back. And if I can't get the baby back, I'm gonna get a new Chrysler three hundred. And they then, don't make them anymore, do they? I'm going to find one. It doesn't have to be, I don't mean like brand new, but new to me. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So I'll get that. And then. My dad wanted a Chrysler 300 at the time. Why didn't he get one? Because he was a broke fucking pussy. <laughs> Dude, I was too when I finally got mine. I felt like at any second you know year they were going to take was? it away from me. It was a 2010, because I got it in 2012. Yeah, it was a 2010. Barely used. Uh, they're holding a little bit of value, dude. Like how much? Like nine thousand dollars on Carfax. Okay. There's four thousand. Okay. Well, I mean, you could buy one for sure. All right. I am gonna f end up with one, even Absolutely. if I just sit in it and take naps like I used to. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna do with it. <laughs> what do you just convert it into a bed? <laughs> <laughs> I sleep in a Chrysler 300. <laughs> God, that was the best. I used to work two jobs, and between two jobs, I would take a little nap. And I had a little little helper in the center console. What kind of interior was it? Leather. Oof, that's Beautiful. great. It was the first car that I had that smelled good. Mm -hmm. It was the first car that, that didn't smell like my dad fucked in it. <laughs> and I, I want to relive that magic. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about that, like, weird Buick velvet interior. Oh, God. That holds dad smells. Dude, the fucking worst. Mm -hmm. We used to have my grandmom's car. And my mom used to, my mom worked at my high school. And she'd drive me in the, into school every day. And my mom would drive slow as shit, and there was this long fucking tuna boat of a fucking automobile. And we were driving in one day, and the car broke down, like, between the girls' school and the boys' school. So all the cool kids that were hanging out before school were hanging out watching my mom's car break down and me having to get out and push my mom's car into the park. Damn, <laughs> little fat boy pushing his mommy's boat. <laughs> Michael, get out. <laughs> push the Riviera, please. <laughs> She, did she, did your parents Riviera. smoke in the car? They did. God, that's the worst. Yeah, man. Get into a car that has cigarette smell stuck in the fucking cheap interior, the cheap cloth interior. Just a little fat boy that smells like horse cum. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing his mom's car in front of all the cool kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gross. Mm. But yeah, my baby smelled great. What else do you want to do? I mean, I want to get. What about On Perks, the movie? Oh, uh, that'd be incredible. Uh, there's something I want to do that you recommended. It's a it's ayahuasca a, trip in Denver. I would do that. Okay. And then it's it's a sketch based upon the book on perks that I then I, we're gonna do. Yeah. Yeah, Danny, d dude. Danny's already made so much progress in the studio, and he's already got like <laughs> kind of like a junior staff under him. He's gonna be freed up to. We're all gonna be freed up. Resources are freeing up. Yeah. To start cranking I, out cool shit. The idea is to get the podcast running like a well-oiled machine. Yeah. And then we're moving on to the real content. Right. Yeah, I think it's going to make the shows better. I think it's going to make the real content real. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, man. You know, w there's a there's a good chance that we're just faggots. Mm -hmm. But there's also a chance that it's that things are working out. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an equal. I, honestly, this might be the most balanced the ratio has ever been between like, are we faggots or is shit going to be pretty cool? And I, this is the best chance we've ever had. Yeah. Right now it's one to one. So it's one it's, to one. So. It's one to one and that's the best it's ever been. That'd be a great men's clothing store, just faggots. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's going to hate the way. Good things look. are coming our way. Yeah, we're doing it, baby. Mm -hmm. Now's a great time to thank our sponsors. This episode of Dad Meat is presented to you by Manscaped. If you go to manscaped.com, use promo code FATBIRD. You can buy all kinds of cool Manscaped shit that'll get your balls, asshole, fucking ears, fucking nose, eyebrows, head, 
back pussy, chest, toes, pussy, whatever you want to use it for. You, they can get your shit smelling right and looking right. Manscaped.com, promo code FATBIRD. Get yourself something nice. I just got the new set. Smell something. good. You trim yourself up? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Like a swimmer. How's it looking? Pretty good, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I lost a bunch of stress weight at the end of the year, so I had a pretty nice form to present to my wife. I also I told you I set up the, the inflatable hot tub in the you backyard. Dog. Well, it was supposed to be like a Christmas present for Mary Jo. Well, I bought the inflatable hot tub as a Christmas present for Mary Jo, and then that was in July, but then we just we were... We did outdoor activities every day, all summer. We just didn't have any time to even use it if I did set it up. So I never set it up. So I set aside time the week before Christmas to set it up in the backyard. And I got, um, I got like a, a, a easy open canopy from Walmart, like mm-hmm. the four legged things that you do like, you know, a camping trip with. And then I, they sell walls for them. So I had like walls on the side of this like Walmart canopy and I put the, um, the inflatable hot tub under it in our backyard like right outside the back door so it was like kind of like this cool almost like a spa room off of the back of our house and i mean i'm thinking like this is not only is this so nicely done that i can feel proud but i might be setting myself up for one of the most intense dick sucks of all time i'm talking about like an ace ventura one hanging onto the ceiling dick real suck. friendly around here <laughs> and then as i'm setting it up leading it was like two or three days before christmas we get hit with that like fucking natural disaster ice wind blizzard. the dick sucking storm yeah, yeah. it's terrible yeah <laughs> so before i even have no ch- a chance to unveil dude i bought i went out and i bought exterior outdoor christmas lights that were like white and they weren't specifically christmas they were nice enough that i was just like dude it was so beautiful looking mm. i'll show you oh, hold on here's a picture of it I set this whole fucking thing up in secret in my backyard in nine and a half degree weather. It took four days for the uh, hot tub to heat up to a usable temperature. And so I used all that time to, you know, to to um, build out the structure around it. And then the storm hits and uh, boy, oh boy, that was a fucking struggle. Dude, 24 hours of listening to the wind just wreck the fucking vinyl canopy outside just whoop, 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 all day hearing it flap and i go outside and i i i had these like paver stones that i use here check it out that's what it looked like whoa man that's really neat yeah um yeah you got your dick sucked dude, just all de- all day de- did i get my dick sucked or did god intervene and as i'm like there was there was it was i think it was the 23rd and i was like babe uh, it's getting pretty bad out there and it's not Christmas yet, but I want you to come see what I built for you. I think you're really going to like it. Mm-hmm. And th- this is what I was going to show her. And uh, Danny, actually, you know what? I'm going to send you this picture. Hold on. Um, I'm like, come, come out and check this out. I, you know, I, I don't know if this is going to last or not. And so, oh, fuck, there it is. I... She goes, okay, hold on. I'm. She, she was getting ready to leave. We were going to Helium, and she was, like, doing her hair. And uh, she's like, all right, I'll be down in a minute. And just as she says that, I hear, like, just a loud crack sound from right outside the window. And I look out, and I can see that it's, like, kind of off kilter. And I go, oh, no. And I go outside, and the, the skeleton of the thing had snapped oh, in the wind. But I was outside all day, like retying, like the st- like restaking it, holding it down, putting pavers by the legs, and eventually the wind just snapped the entire structure, and it was just in shambles, in a pile. And now it's also eight degrees outside, and I have to very quickly clean. I mean, dude, look how fucking you're telling me you're not getting your dick sucked in that. <laughs> it's cafe dick suck. Yo, if not for an act of God, I I was setting myself up for maybe one of the best dick sucks of all time. And then the Lord saw fit to take it all from me in a matter of well, nah, I, buddy. It was it was actually it was like a twenty four hour fight. I stayed up through the night to like reset the feet and like hold it down. At one point, I had my son helping me hold it up in the wind, like a fucking uh, like a lobster boat captain. <laughs> Fritz almost got cut in half by one of the ropes getting like. <laughs> Cutting half pretty bad, Dad. <laughs> And it and it got I mean it got destroyed and I didn't get my dick sucked and I, I don't know if I'll ever recover from this. Well, you deserve it, buddy. <laughs> but I, I think your dick sucks coming. In preparation for unveiling this to my wife, I had gotten my brand new Manscaped kit and I made sure that I was pre- <laughs> presenting a pretty good piece. <laughs> That's Manscaped.com <laughs> promo code Fatbird. <laughs>
Uh, also, check out BetterHelp.com if you're struggling or if you <sighs> just need some fucking maintenance. BetterHelp <laughs> has you covered. Just go to BetterHelp.com, promo code FATBIRD. You get a discount on the first month. And it actually might be three months. I don't fucking know. But I've used it over the summer. I started using it when I was uh, in the field at the end of my street, screaming to my wife that my brain was broken. BetterHelp get me back on track. I found a good therapist right away. If you don't like the therapist you get, it's very easy to switch out. You could either do teleconferencing, you could do text, you could fucking, whatever you want to do, they make it easy to do. And you can do that by going to betterhelp.com, promo code FATBIRD. Also go to trueclassic.com, promo code FATBIRD. They got all kinds of good shit to wear, all kinds of great athletic wear. The most comfortable t-shirts you could, you could fucking wear. Their sweats are incredible too. They got jackets, they got fucking, they got fucking sex swings. Whatever the fuck you want from True Classic, you can go there. Trueclassic.com, promo code FATBIRD. Get yourself looking right. Your balls are in shape. You're looking good with your true classic clothes. You really do for a good dick sucking. Yeah, you got your head in the right space. You do. We're cultivating a lifestyle of getting your fucking meat sucked. That's that's what all this is about. Everything that we do is about getting our dick sucked. I don't give a fuck. If my wife ended up in a motorized wheelchair with all the work that I'm putting in to make our lives better, I'd be like, girl, if you got enough strength to blow into that straw, you got enough strength to <laughs> blow into this pipe. <laughs> <laughs> if my wife was blowing me from, from a motorized wheelchair, I would start moving around the room. <laughs> Why don't paraplegics have the same reputation as fat women for sucking mean dick? Um, I wish I had an answer for Very that. Very calloused hands. Yeah. I mean, that's probably a part of it. Yeah, I'm going to look that up tonight. Just try to steer you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's mean stuff. I don't no, like that. No, that's good. No, that's really gross bad that's stuff. What, that's what the... They're leave, good at that. Leave ladies in wheelchairs alone, man. I can't wait till my wife's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Dude, I really hope she goes downhill before I do, man, because I I do not want to be taken care of. I mean... And if she's in a wheelchair, it would be pretty easy for her to go downhill, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you have a murder fantasy? No, uh, no. Nah. Uh, I'm teasing. So, wait, have you watched the video of Dana White smacking his wife yet? I have, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Would you? What did you? What were your initial feelings? Uh, he won the fight. Actually, I haven't seen this really anywhere. I saw. I had this was buried deep in like a, a Twitter trending topic for me, which I rarely check. But I saw. I think I saw Dana White apology, and I was like, oh, that seems out of character for him. Yeah, this seems uh, very appropriate for this setting. She got a much. Oh, okay. So when I was reading the tweets about it and him saying like, you know, I, I I'm one of those guys that says you never hit a lady, and I, you know, but she hit him first. I would have never guessed. He cracks her again. Twice? Yeah. No. Yep. Whoa, that turned into a real fight. The most fucked up aspect of this was after this, he calls out John Jones's wife. <laughs> Play it. I'm going to see it from the beginning again, Danny. So she cracks him Woo. in front of his boys, by the uh, way. So that's that's one. tough one to come back And that was that wasn't a big wind-up. And the second one I don't think really landed. I know what happened, though. On the first one, he didn't get, like, the... He didn't get like the clap he was looking for. Okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, you ever go? You ever go to smack cheeks and you're like, "Oh, I didn't get the sound I was looking for." Let's yeah, you really again. wind up and to get that you go way too hard on the yeah. second one. That's probably what happened. And then she went into bitch defense mode and started firing back at him. That's a fight. Yeah, I don't think this is. You know, this isn't like a lady getting knocked out in the elevator stuff. <laughs> I'm glad he apologized. <laughs> but when I saw the video, I was like, "All right, well, this isn't completely black and white. There's a gray area here." Nah, take her down, man. Take her down and hold her arms behind her. Yeah, yeah. grab both wrists. Yeah. Nothing's more frustrating than when you're being little brothers. Yeah, but I think if you hold a lady's wrists like that, she's going to get you later. Like I think I think later? You, go, you go slap for slap, mm -hmm. that's it. It's over, apologize to TMZ. Mm -hmm. You hold her wrist, and she's like, you bastard! Mm -hmm. Later on, she's going to stab you in your sleep or something, or like, fuck one of your buddies. Do you think maybe he said, well, I don't you? Well, well, I don't you go. Would you want to come? <laughs> I'll get you. Slow. <laughs> yeah. No, I. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's funny to joke about, but, you know, there are guys that are like, one thing you never do, you never hit a girl. Actually, I was just watching the Shia LaBeouf and John Bernthal podcast. They Did you watch other? that at all? No. No, I have no desire. Shia LaBeouf got in trouble because he, like, beat up his girlfriend and gave her herpes or something like that. Did you, did you even know Shia LaBeouf got canceled? I know he was going crazy. He got seemingly he got, going crazy. He but. got he got like a combo Me Too domestic violence thing, mm -hmm. 
and he's canceled. And John Bernthal, I only know about this because I, in my YouTube browsing, I saw a clip from Rogan where John Bernthal was like, it took him 10 minutes to explain why he had Shia LaBeouf on his podcast and how he got in trouble for it. And he was just like saying the same shit, like one thing you never do with me. By the way, he also thinks he's the Punisher now. John Bernthal like truly thinks he is the Punisher. He's like, one thing you never do with me, brothers, you never hit a woman, you never hit a child. I think there's no coming back from that. But then I look at my friend Shia LaBeouf and I say, but what does a brother do for a brother in this situation? <clears throat> and a brother helps you not hit another child, not hit another woman. And that's all. I had him on my podcast, brother, and I. And it's just like, dude, just 10 minutes of just L.A. bullshit, cum gargling to explain that, you know, they had, they did a two-hour podcast together where Shia, by, by, by the way, Shia LaBeouf has like a southern accent, did you know? He's nah. on there, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that this happened. I'm thankful that I got in this trouble, and it gave me a chance to pray and do the, some work on this whole thing. And uh, <clears throat> they're just, they're just talking about how like you know my bad i needed a wake-up call smacking a woman was that wake-up call <laughs> and it's just the most phony bullshit ever yeah i haven't kept up with john berthold but the last that i heard shia labeouf it might have been an excerpt from that interview with john berthold actually now that i think about it but he was doing like that sing-songy like um southern california thing like what like it's uh you hear it like charles manson no like a um <laughs> it's like uh Wish they all could. No, it's be. like like when when you speak and it's like no, they both do like uh, YouTube barbecue guy Southern accents now. Pretty weird stuff. Pretty actually weird psyopy stuff, um, which is bizarre. And also, it turns out uh, so like Bernthal's like talking about how like he wants to seem like a like a farmhand almost, mm. like a rancher. And then you, someone on Twitch told me to look him up, and it's like he's the he's like the son of like, I don't know, millionaire. Like he he grew up wealthy and like studied acting in Russia, and mm -hmm. now he has a southern accent and thinks he's like the the toughest guy in the world. Isn't Mike Rowe like that? Yeah. Well, I don't know what Mike Rowe's background is, but he's just a phony as well. Mm. They're all phonies, dude. That's the thing. If I I I I I'm developing a fantasy where I move to LA and I just have boxing gloves grafted onto my hands and it's just on site every time I see one of these people. Anyone I see holding like an expensive Starbucks drink, it's just concussion on the spot. You ever watch Deadliest Catch? Yes. Maybe we should make Deadliest Slap where it's just couples on the high seas just fighting for months at a time. Okay. So I <laughs> They also make money by selling the stuff that they catch on Deadly Sketch. So how do we, <laughs> what if we did a, a couple's slap league? Dana White just started a slap league. Oh. Dude, this is just viral marketing. <laughs> what the hell? Dana, Dana White just started a slap <laughs> league, and now all of a sudden he's embroiled in controversy for slapping his wife. And she's, by the way, she slaps him. That looked like round one to me. <laughs> what he could the, be setting this up. What the hell, dude? Yeah, power slap. I'm so glad I'm, Ultimate like, above promo. all this shit. You know? Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, I, the point I was making is that, like, these dudes are all just, like, super serious. Like, you don't even joke about hitting a woman, brother. But it's like, yeah, right. Your convictions are paid for thin. I came close to hiring somebody to hit my sister. <laughs> Like with a strike or like blow up her car? Yeah. <laughs> I, I worked with a real nasty bitch named Linda Lou. And I was like. Very... She had to be 65 years old. No, man. She was uh, early 20s. Just, what? Just a fucking fire plug of a woman. And I was beefing with my sister at the time. And I knew Lin Lin Linda Lou was about that life. I'm about to call Linda the plug. <laughs> You don't stop being mean to me. Dude, my sister was fucking. You don't stop the slapping my titties while I'm doing dishes. <laughs> I'm gonna get Linda Ludo. Good to mommy. Up. Stop. <laughs> Fuck that. Yeah, but yeah. Mm, what? So what's st what stopped your hand? What stopped you from doing this? A kind heart. You? Oh, you're a kind heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> not Linda Lou's now. <laughs> you thought? You thought? I looked inside and I thought better of it, brother. I said I'm not gonna pay this fat bitch to punch my sister in the face. <laughs> That's just not something I do, brother. Oh man, I miss her. She's got to be dead by now. She was early twenties. You were? Yeah. Were you about the same? same? Yeah. 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 We both worked at a nightclub. Yeah. You're there. barely alive. <laughs> There's no <laughs> way she is. <laughs> you're doing pretty good, and you're barely alive. <laughs> She's got to be dead. 
<laughs> she got hit by a car or something. <laughs> yeah, she definitely had getting uh, killed in a motorcycle accident energy. Ooh. God bless her, man. I miss her. You ever hit your wife before? No. Good, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Mary Jo play fight pretty bad. I, I know... I know you get after it. Yeah. Do you think that's why she started jujitsu? Because my wife getting the upper hand on me from a strength perspective is part of why I started jujitsu. <laughs> no, I think I think she just wanted something cool to do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she was doing like a Jennifer Lopez in the movie enough scenario. Mm. Cuz I'm I'm she's the aggressor. Uh-huh. When it's time for us to play, maybe that's what they maybe they were just play fighting, but Typically, Mary Jo's the one that takes it too far, and I have to like fight for my life. Do you think maybe she's the one that ripped my fucking hot tub set up? If I didn't have eyes on her, I'd be like, "You knew how hard you're going to suck my dick, and you fucking ruined my <laughs> night on purpose." I would have went dark on it instantly. Danny, what's happening with my microphone? Is that coming through? Yeah. That's something. You know what? We've got a couple minutes left. We could we could bear it out, and then we'll fix it in between this and the Patreon. Man. Yeah, my wife, she used to scare the shit out of me, like, pretty often. Like, there was one time, the first time she got me good was at her first apartment. <laughs> Kicks the door open, where's your dinner, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> Go make yourself dinner. She she jumped out of a closet. She was knocking, the closet was right next to the front door, and she was knocking against the wall next to the front door, and I kept answering the door. You fucking idiot. <laughs> and then after, like, the fourth or fifth time I came back in, I was like, what the fuck? And then I was sitting on the couch waiting for somebody to knock again, and then my wife just burst out of the closet. And uh, I don't know what I look like, but I guarantee you it was a giant pussy. Damn. Mike Rainey in the news apologizing for not hitting his wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now that I say that out loud, I should have socked her when she came on here for own perks. Dude, Dana White is literally promoting his slap league by slapping his wife on TMZ. Yeah. You could have done the same thing. Yeah. That's I could pretty promote more. Do you forgive Dana White? He issued a pretty sincere apology. He said, I'm very sorry for doing this. That's not something you ever want to do, but we've been together for a while. He also said that this was the first time that it's ever happened. Do you believe which makes me think? No, which no. makes me think it's not. No. Because it wasn't like... What would you say if it really was the first time, though? Let's say... Then it someone... had to be for the Slap League promo. But I think Ooh. this is... <laughs> A very regular thing that has mm. happened in yeah. their house. Yeah, I think a lady swinging well, first in public. This has happened before. Yeah, you think that's on the vacation first time too. She did it? In Mexico, hitting you on vacation—that's not a first-time hitter. I don't know. I think if you're gone, if if yeah, I would test it out in Mexico first. I I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking vacations can be so stressful that that might bring out a first mm -hmm. swing. But I, I don't know, man. Never been there. There before the great Chicago I. <laughs> Dude, my wife was very close to getting hit by a car in Clearwater, Florida, two summers ago. Wasn't paying attention. About to walk into the street. She did not see this car coming. And I screamed her name. And she turns around and she goes, what? And I was like, bitch, you are about to get creamed. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, vacation does bring it out of you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's vacation, it's slap league season. I mean, these are all mitigating factors. I'm not saying it's ever okay to smack a woman, but if you're married to your wife for a really long time... And you just started a slap league. And she hits you first, and you just started a slap league, and he only went half power. Like, he didn't fill the meter all the way mm -hmm. up. He didn't go into the... He was still... He barely was in the yellow. <laughs> he went, what? Bam! Like he, that, was a, that was a chip shot. That wasn't a drive off the <laughs> off of the tee. He chip shot at his wife, and unfortunately, it was a hole in one. <laughs> Man, you'd be a good le good uh, lawyer. <laughs> Your honor, for real, seriously, come on, man. They've been to a lot together. Didn't you read his statement? No, I, I don't think I'll ever hit Mary Jo. But if I ever did, it would be justified for sure. <laughs> That's I'm, all I'll say, dude. When I managed a Little Caesars, a guy hit his wife right out front of the store. That's, dude, that's when in Rome. <laughs> when in front of Little Caesars. <laughs> They've never built a Little Caesars in a place where people didn't hit their wives. <laughs> every every single one I've ever been to mm -hmm. was, I mean, in front of a bus stop, by yeah. the way. And, you know, that's 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 the slap box Olympics for mm -hmm. couples. <laughs> yeah, Charles Bliznick and I saw a guy hit his girlfriend. In Philly one time. And you both cowered in fear, I remember. I'm not getting involved in that. No, you shouldn't. Nope. You can't. Yeah. Because if you, honestly, if you help Dana White's wife 
in that situation and you punch Dana White in the face, which honestly, that might be one of the if you, if we're ranking most gratifying sucker punches, I think clocking Dana White might be top of the leaderboard. Mm-hmm. That might be number that's he if he's not number one, he's top five. It'd be a fun TikTok challenge if people just started smacking him now. Mm-hmm. Smack his head, smack, smack his bald head. But if you get in the if you get involved and you sock Dana White, then she's jumping on you, mm-hmm. going stop, stop, getting your eyes scratched out. Mm-hmm. You really can't get in. that's unfortunate. That's that's why I feel bad for ladies because they don't have that a thing in their head that stops them from attacking the guy that's defending them mm-hmm. against their boyfriend. Have you ever defended a lady? Probably no. No, I've probably I've probably done the same thing you and Blizz did where I go, nope. I did call the police though. Yeah, that's about all you can do. And then the cops get fucking scratched. And... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, defending a woman defending a a stranger in a domestic violence situation is like getting a cat out of a tree. Like, yeah, you're gonna look like a hero, but you gotta hose it out. As as David James said, you're gonna get some scratches. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that shit is, but maybe, maybe not caring about it. <laughs> maybe not caring. Yeah, about th- there's no, there's no right answer here. Yeah, not a, dude. Like I said, it's not black and white. Mm. Speaking of what is black, how about those two black ladies that found that baby? <laughs> I wanted. I was hoping that you'd be all up on this. I'm not. Listen, it's we'll time talk to about switch it on the over. Patreon. But I t- want. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you. I think it was in Indianapolis. Yes, or was. was it? But there was a there was a kidnapped infant and an Amber Alert, and the police apparently weren't trying very hard, and the case was cracked by two uh, Miss Yolandas, <laughs> and uh, the reason I found out about it was because CNN had written an article about it, and it was like police by a, a miracle happen upon a missing infant, and I saw like the the reporter from the local paper that had initially. Mm-hmm broke the story said this is not what happened at all i actually wrote about the two ladies who tr- who first caught the kidnapper and then after the police didn't pursue it further they found the child separately mm. but i think it's like a i mean if i'm if i'm a movie studio i'm i'm casting the two fattest sassiest black ladies i could find to make a movie about this yesterday ooh i would go with all right monique mm Yo, yo, you know who's due for a career? You know who's due for a Matthew McConaughey treatment? Medea. Better. Who? Queen Latifah. She wouldn't. She's a serious actress now doing CBS crime dramas. But that's what I'm saying. This is her this is her McConaughey moment where she goes back into the limelight. Oh yeah. But I I just don't think she would do it. Like Matthew McConaughey is retarded enough to be like, okay, like I, I'm willing to take that chance. This is more of like require her to take more of a whale approach like Brendan Fraser by going entirely out of her league to become something different. And I just think she's settled into doing what she's doing where it would never happen. It's our, it's our new year's episode. We're talking about what we're going to do. You're telling me I can't get queen Latifah for my black lady road buddy comedy brother. You'd be lucky to get princess Latifah. <laughs> Go to uh, check out twitch.tv slash Tim Butterly. <laughs> I'm I'm going hard. I'm we're having the best time ever over there. And check out Stoner Dads. Thank you for being with us today. <laughs> yeah, check out uh my book my books that are across the room now. On Perks, you can go to onperks.com. The books are finally fucking here. I'm happy to ship them out to everybody. If you like anything I do, I guarantee you you will love this book. It is thoroughly retarded. Oh, Miss Pat is the idea. That's it. Oh, she's terrific. God damn yeah. It, yes. Oh, Yamanika. Oh man. Damn, move over, Monique. Your time has passed. Yeah, suck it, Latifa. You had your chance. See, I'm sorry. You were right. I was wrong. I know. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm, I'm brash. I'm impulsive, dude. I can't help it. I'm a fucking idiot. Whatever. Let's go. All right. We'll see you on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Podcast. Come join us. Pay whatever you want. We'll see you guys there. Goodbye.